Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, the Christmas season is over. In some ways, that's really nice to hear, because it means that we can get back into routines and regular meals. We can stop spreading those nasty colds back and forth within the family. I feel like I've had three in the last month. We can try to get a handle on our finances again after all of that shopping. But on the other hand, it's kind of depressing, isn't it? Family members are returning home. Children are returning to school and college. We're running out of cookies. We're beginning to return to the mundane portions of life. In the coming days, we get back to work and school. Christmas will be behind us, and the depths of winter will be in front of us. And the light that was so prominent for a week or two is beginning to fade in our minds. In our hectic, busy, crazy, everyday lives, we can so easily lose sight of the light in our lives. Isn't that kind of Christmas every year, though? It's just this giant buildup of the infant Jesus coming into our lives. There's excitement, presence, family, every kind of hype that can be. And then, as quickly as it came, the season is over. And to be bluntly honest, Christ falls out of our lives. Sometimes the joy and light fall out of our lives as well and our eyes gaze back down into the slow trudge of living. Jesus begins to fall out of mind. Christ begins to fade into the everyday world, out of sight and out of mind. Everything begins to look ordinary. There's another story that I'd like to share with you that takes place in an ordinary setting. I want to introduce you to Lindsay Sterling in just an ordinary subway station in New York City.
I think we'd all agree Lindsay Sterling is a beautiful concert violinist and dancer. She performs all over the world and sells out concerts with her ability to combine varieties of music genres such as classical, contemporary, electric, and even dubstep into her performances. A famous performer who sells out concerts around the world, who has people begging her for her autographs and tickets, a person who has over a billion views on her YouTube videos, becomes anonymous in a subway station in Manhattan. Although she is right in front of these people, they do not know her. They do not see her. She was just another street performer, just another person. Many of you know that this is a very similar story to one written by the Washington Post about the world-class violinist Joshua Bell. Bell, who regularly sells out concerts for over $200 a ticket, played in a Washington, D.C. metro station. His instrument was a 300-year-old Stradivarius violin worth $3.5 million. He gave the same concert that he would have in a sold-out concert hall, but this time played in just a simple metro station. In the 45 minutes that he played, 1,097 people walked by him. Only one person recognized who he was. Just one. A world-class violinist playing some of the most beautiful music in the world on the most beautiful instrument in the world was anonymous. Joshua Bell was right in front of those people in the ordinary world all around them, but they did not know him. They did not see him. He was just an ordinary performer in the metro station. Just another person. The author of the Washington Post article, Mark Batterson, writes, If we do not have a moment to stop and listen to one of the greatest musicians in the world playing some of the finest music ever written on one of the most beautiful instruments ever made, how many similarly sublime moments do we miss out on during a normal day? As we move further and further from Christmas, Jesus becomes less known, less real, less visible. Christ becomes just another ordinary story, an ordinary person in our lives in the hustle and bustle of subway stations. Even 2,000 years ago, the disciples, the Pharisees, and the scribes walked with Jesus but could never understand who he was. Although he was there with them, they did not know him. Their eyes were not open to see him. In our gospel text today, we see a stark contrast of those whose eyes are open and those whose eyes cannot see beyond themselves. Wise men, magi from the far east, come thousands of miles following a star in hopes of finding something special. Their eyes were open. They were looking for something spectacular, a king to pay homage. Herod, the king, hears of this news and is terrified. News of the birth of the Messiah is not good news. It threatens his power, it threatens his way of being. News like this means that things could change. Herod's eyes can only look at what is impacting his own life, and he demands that every person only see how his life is impacted. Eyes wide open or eyes closed to the world. It is a stark contrast, but one that is not foreign to our lives. And this story in the gospel only illustrates it further. The Magi are looking for a glorious king. Herod is fearful of a coming conqueror who will usurp his power. But the star stops overhead. It stops over a house, a simple home in Bethlehem. It is there that they find what they were truly looking for. They saw the child in Mary's arms, and they were filled with joy. The promise that they received was not the one that they expected. In it, they found something far greater. In the arms of a young mother, in this ordinary home, in this ordinary town, the wise men found God. That is the theme that runs through so much of Scripture. It is a theme that runs through so many of our beloved stories. 
We walk around in this world in hope of seeing something miraculous and beautiful, knowing that it can only happen in the extravagant, expensive, and elegant moments. But the true beauty and miracles of this world can be found when our eyes are open to see the beautiful in the ordinary. It's a theme that runs throughout all of scripture, eyes open, the light shining forth so that we can see. That is God's hope for us. That is God's dream for us. Is that our eyes can be open to this world, open to see the gifts and beauty in this world. That we might be able to open our eyes and see that God has been with us and around us the whole time. At Christmas time, we hear the promise of Emmanuel, which means God with us. That is not just a promise for Christmas, but a promise for every day of our lives. As we trudge into the winter months, we could close ourselves off. But in our ordinary, everyday lives, in our commutes to work, in the podcasts or playlists that we listen to, in our work or schedules, God is with us. And there is beauty, love, and joy to be found. The Epiphany season is here for a purpose. It calls for us to keep our eyes open, because when we do, we will see gifts and beauty and love that we never knew that we needed, that is all around us. If we do not have a moment to stop and listen, how many sublime moments do we miss out on during a normal day? With eyes wide open, we will see the gift. With eyes wide open, we will see God. Amen.